YouTube, thanks for checking out RV Daydream. And today I want to talk about a refrigerator for a van or possibly for your RV or even in your vehicle uh, if you need extra storage for food. I've been riding on a daydream. So now a lot of Heidi and I subscribers to our channel uh, know that our son is looking to convert over his van and become a nomad and uh, travel the country while he's still young and, and check things out. And in the process of this van build uh, that we're doing, uh, we know that there was a, a, a need for him to have some way to store food. I looked at a lot of the refrigerators online. I did a lot of research like I normally do for all my stuff. And of course, I do reviews for uh, my other channel uh, that's the same manner in which I'm going to kind of do this review. And that is, uh, I look at the product, I do a lot of research on the product, and I find out the pros and cons and then whenever I make the purchase at that point we uh, go over everything uh, after we're a little bit used to it now in this case this is going to be the first time that I get to run this and we're going to do a little bit of a test to see how fast it gets cold and uh, you know room temperature it's about 73 degrees and we'll try to see what it'll drop down to and how to basically get this thing up and going now the first thing I want to say is whenever I got it it was packaged pretty well um, the outside box I was really concerned UPS when they delivered it uh, I saw whenever he unloaded it from the truck it was laying on its side out of my yard um, it is heavy and it does say team lift all over the box for the employees of the winter company um, so I'm sure that uh, UPS might have had a problem with it because it's 63 pounds even though this is the 45 quart one they make a 65 quart one that's even a little bit bigger and of course they make smaller ones too um, but as far as the packaging uh, the box was okay there was an inner packing system that really protected it I was really pleased with the overall result now as far as what this thing came with uh, there was some uh, cords uh, two cords uh, one to plug into the cigarette lighter and uh, of course that's the DC power cord and then also another one that plugs into the household and then the manual which isn't much of a manual but online they do have support for these things that go above and beyond a lot of FAQ pages specifically for whatever product you have and again this is the 45 quart model so let's go ahead and take a look at the refrigerator and uh, go over some of the things. This is like an old style chest cooler that you may have had years ago because it's all metal and they don't really make coolers out of metal anymore this does come with a uh, locking hasp so if you've got something you're trying to protect <laughs> you can put it in there and this is a positive latch and then of course you can put a little lock through here if somebody wants in there though they're going to get in there then there's handles on the outside uh, that are spring-loaded um, that have kind of uh, a softer grip to them a textured grip makes it a little bit easier to carry and then there's a drain plug down below like uh, most refrigerator freezers have uh, there's some ventilation that's provided here uh, on the front for some components it looks like the power and then this would probably be for the compressor on the side here now I got a scratch and dent one and uh, this is what I got and I got a discount for that little ding there which I don't have a problem with and then the same here uh, some ventilation there uh, here's the model number if you want the details on that and there was some other stuff that I found online that I thought was interesting which we'll look at here in a second but um, here's the inside I still haven't taken the plastic off yet uh, for the protection it came with some shipping protection here for the the lid not to be compressing this gasket in an early manner and then there's two baskets they're uh, you know removable baskets now they're they're taped together still <laughs> but these are removable and they are separate um, and this is the step for the compressor and then of course this is uh, storage on this side for the bigger items uh, pretty straightforward and kinda nice uh, the the finish is nice I like the way that it feels and as far as it getting ruined uh, through weather yeah it's gonna happen you can't leave this outside you need to protect it from the rain and the moisture as much as possible and of course heat uh, the hotter it is outside the harder it will be for this thing to cool so as far as the overall size I've got some dimensions here you can see kind of what the length and the width and the height is and uh, how deep it is um, and basically I'm showing you here 
uh, all the dimensions so you can get an idea of maybe if you want to put it in a compartment of some kind how far the lid can open and uh, still clear whatever's right above it but you do have to have a uh, air gap all the way around uh, the freezer uh, so it will work correctly so make sure you read the manual and follow those guidelines speaking of the manual you can see here uh, it's pretty I don't know sparse it's there's not a lot to it and I'm kinda happy about that because it tells you what you need to know and uh, just that's it no, no extra clutter if there's something extra you want to know uh, you can get online and again FAQ uh, they'll tell you uh, what you need to know about it the other thing you can do is call their customer service which I did now their customer service uh, this is the number it's 1-866-949-6837 they're Monday through Friday 830 to 430 Pacific Standard Time I got my phone call answered right away um, somebody who spoke perfect English <laughs> and as far as uh, the answer that I got it was immediate they didn't have to put me on hold they knew exactly what I was talking about and that was something that you want to do too whenever you get yours delivered by whoever delivers it don't just think because they delivered it upright that it hasn't been on its side or upside down at any point in time with a compressor style refrigerator freezer like this one is you have to let the refrigerant go back into the compressor before you plug it in if you plug it in prematurely it will burn up the compressor immediately so every time I have any refrigerators that I've ever transported on their side uh, I make sure that I leave it upright for at least 24 hours now their actual instructions say six hours but I always do 24 hours because it's better safe than sorry it's instant fry on the compressor if you don't now let's get to this other paperwork this is some of the information that came from their FAQ page and I'll see if I can put a link in here if not we'll just go ahead and look at what I've got printed out and this is all the information as far as the power consumption and when you're running it um, and this is the outside temperature 77 90 109 that's whatever this uh, refrigerator freezer is seeing on the outside and then the power consumption on uh, AC and then DC power uh, of course you've got different battery uh, amp hours that's suggested for each one of these situations and as far as the battery time usage and it even talks about solar power and uh, solar panel charging time very very interesting that they've already done a lot of this research for us uh, so we can get a good idea of what we need to do and what we need to have again uh, this is on their FAQ as far as the refrigerator itself uh, I think it's the perfect size for a van for somebody that's going to be living in a van uh, if this was a tailgating thing I don't think that it would be necessarily the best one but um, it, because it's just being so big but then again if you're tailgating you want to fill that full of beer I'm sure uh, there's a lot of room in there so that's that's kind of nice but a lot of people that are living in their van with limited space they don't want anything too big and they don't want anything too small now as I keep on referring to this as a freezer or fridge it's because it can do both it has the option for both and that's all done through this control panel now I'm gonna plug this in and I'm gonna to try to talk about this real quick as it's going on but I'm gonna show you uh, and do an experiment uh, as far as time is concerned about how cool this is so this is a gauge that we keep in our freezer downstairs now this gauge is relatively accurate right now it's about 72 degrees in the house uh, this gauge is a baked on enamel stamped metal gauge from 1973 it's been in the refrigerator freezer I should say our deep freezer downstairs since Sears delivered it uh, in 1973 it's actually a 1972 model freezer but it was uh, early 73 that it was installed in the basement and this does a really good job so we're going to use this as a gauge and I'm going to put it halfway down through and I'm going to kind of put it halfway in the middle of the refrigerator freezer so we'll put it right there and we'll let it uh, tell us what happens and we'll get a time frame a time reference of uh, what it does over a certain amount of time plugged into household power so now back to the power port all right so I'm going to go ahead and plug this in for the very first time and it's just into the household outlet you can see what the display says 
Uh, there's a bunch of information here. I'll have to figure that out as we go along, but I'm not really here to explain all that. Um, it is saying that it is on AC power, and it says what the temperature is currently inside, which is 68 degrees. Now, as far as uh, the compressor, it's currently running right now, and we can adjust the temperature through here. There's also a button that says set, and that's when you're running on DC power. You can set it uh, to cut off at different amperages which is a brilliant idea. So let's say your battery gets down to 11 volts. This thing will cut off at 11 volts so it doesn't pull on the battery anymore. Uh, really nice feature. And again, there's three different settings for that. It's all in the manual. It shows you how to do that. I'm not going to show that to you today. Uh, but we're going to uh, go over how to set at least the temperature. So now that it's got this pretty simple plus and minus, as you can see, it's real simple. You just push set and then you push the up and down button. And I'm going to set it to 23 degrees. 23 degrees is, uh, quite honestly, a little bit warmer than a freezer, obviously, but a little bit cooler than a refrigerator. Now, as far as checking the temperature, all you got to do is push the set button. And that tells you what the temperature currently is set at. Whenever it beeps, that lets you know what it currently is at. So currently it's 68 degrees inside the refrigerator. It's 11.45 a.m. We'll see how long it takes to get to that 23 degrees I just set it at. So you can also see there's a mode button. And if you press the mode button for five seconds, when this is in operation, plugged in and turned on, um, the mode button will allow you to select between auto, low speed, and fast freeze operation. In the auto mode, the auto indicator light will light up. It's a yellow light uh, when the freezer is running on auto mode. Uh, whenever you put it on low, the low indicator light will come up as green and the freezer is running on low speed mode. And then also you have a uh, fast freeze, which the LED display here will read FF for fast freeze. And that will rapidly cool the unit down to minus eight degrees. So it's kind of cool that if you've got something and you need to freeze it fast, you can put it in that mode and get it down to the coldest possible. Now, of course, when you're running on battery power, it's going to be a little bit different, but you can still set those modes to do the same thing. Okay, so it's already dropped to 67 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and let this thing run for a while. We'll come back and check it out and see how cold it gets. And you can see that we are 22 degrees, so it's definitely uh, lower than the 23 degrees that we set it at. And I don't know exactly when it got there, but it got there faster than I expected. Uh, right now, it is currently 12.55, so it was an hour and 10 minutes, and we're already at running temperature, uh, again, possibly sooner. Let's go ahead and confirm that with the gauge that's inside here uh, to make sure, yep. It's showing uh, 20 degrees inside, actually. So I'm pretty impressed with that. Uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and set this down to minus 8 and see what happens. Uh, see if we can get it to uh, get down to that. Now, I'm not going to time this, uh, but we'll uh, just see what happens as far as the temperature. There you go. Minus 8 degrees. So let's let this thing go. You can hear the compressor is not currently running, but I'm sure it's going to kick on here shortly. Yep, there we go. It just kicked on. So we'll go ahead and let this run, make sure that it gets down to that temperature. Uh, we'll check the time, but again, it's 1 o'clock now, and I'm not sure when I'm going to be able to come back and take a peek at it and let you know. But so far so good all right so it's two o'clock and it's minus five degrees so this is doing very well and you can look inside here which that wants to seal pretty well and you can see the temperature is definitely on the minus side looks like this gauge might be a little bit off after all because it's saying 10 degrees I might have to change that <laughs> unless it's that cold in there and maybe this is off a little bit I'm not real sure I would think that this would be more accurate because it's digital and it's newer um, and it could be I mean that that gauge is old so the product is a winter refrigerator or winter freezer however you want to look at it and this is the 45 quart model 
I'm putting the link down below in the description. Click the link. It'll take you right to the product. You can take a look at whatever the closest price is that you may want to pay. And the way that you do that is you actually go and check underneath um, where it has the price and it says available from other sellers. Uh, that's what we usually do and that's how I got this one it was a scratch and dent and you could see it just had that little tiny ding in that one cooling fin uh, guard basically um, very very good product I mean the, the quality of it you could tell is incredible now I compared this to the Dometic brand and although the Dometic had its own pros and cons uh, like this winter uh, the winter basically it came down to it uses less power than the Dometic did uh, I like that and you know that that for me is the big thing is just that it uses less power because it will be plugged in using a battery on his van a couple batteries potentially but one battery for sure and the nice thing is again it they have that chart that shows you what it, you would need as far as solar to run it um, that's nice to know I mean it's already done so again the links down below I hope this helped you out in some manner and of course look for our, our build whenever we get this van uh, on the road a little bit further down the road I should say on the build uh, we're gonna go ahead and make this thing a lot nicer uh, the the features that he had when he got the van were okay but we're basically going to rebuild everything inside and that's in a complete different series which is ongoing and of course we'll post that whenever we're done and you'll get to see the refrigerator again whenever we're installing it so I hope this video helped you out on some level I appreciate it again link is down below in the description and as always we hope to see you out there bye